Hey everyone, this is Michael Dougal, the Nootropic Reviewer, and during this video, I'm going to share my thoughts on this Rasatam shortage. How am I dealing with it? Are there alternatives? First, I'd like you to all know sincerely that I am facing the same challenge as you are because I was using uh, four great Rasatams for many, many years and they've really helped me build my business and also really helped me with my mindset and personal growth. And those four Rasatams were uh, Prastam, Anarastam, Oxyrastam and Pramarastam almost every single day. So right now anyway, I'm like stocked up on my Anarastam and my Prastam, but I haven't taken any Oxyrastam and Pramarastam for a while. And that's kind of concerning because Oxyrastam is really great for alertness and Pramarastam is really good for routine work to build your discipline, to build your willpower, to focus on getting those repetitively boring tasks done. However, I don't have any of it right now. And Prastam, I'm really grateful that I still do have that one in stock. And Prastam was like the first nootropic I had ever taken. I mean, outside of caffeine and L-tyrosine, like those ingredients in pre-workouts. It was Prastam, which really helped me with my memory when I was a student. So one of the things that I found most helpful right now, while we're to some extent undersupplied with the Rastams, is discontinue the use of some of the adaptogenic herbs that you may be using because they can often demotivate you. Things like Bacopa, things like lion's mane or ashwagandha. So because in the past I was using more racetams, I was able to take more adaptogens as a result in order to, to have something that would kind of like put the brakes on it a little bit. I'm still using the same ones. Like I love my adaptogens. I love rhodiola rosea. I've talked about how I've adjusted the intake of ashwagandha specifically in this video right here because it used to be such that I would take 800 milligrams up to one gram of ashwagandha every single day, yet I really can't get away with doing that right now because it will demotivate me, it will make me tired, it will make me a little bit lethargic. I don't really respond that well to ashwagandha. Like it makes me present, makes me calm, but it doesn't make me want to go that extra mile. Uh, being in sales, it doesn't really want to make me make that extra call, especially when I'm not using the Rastams because the Rastams are always, of course, going to be one of the best things when it comes to motivation. Of course, outside of caffeine and outside of stimulants. Stimulants, of course, being probably one of the best things out there when it comes to motivation. They get you to work, they get you alert, they get you money-minded. It's a nice feeling, but it's short lasting and then often with stimulants unfortunately you have the energy crash and I really like that about the Rasatams that with the Rasatams you can use them on a daily basis for a week to two weeks along with the choline source and you could expect to feel more motivated more energized you had better word recall but I think everyone needs to appreciate this a little bit like secretly I've always been waiting for a time when I couldn't get the Rasatams because I was on them like every single day or almost every single day for a year so thankfully I don't even really want to go out there and find some other source of the Rastimes. I'm good just not trying too many for a bit, maybe being off of all the Rastimes. And one supplement specifically that I am consuming more of, and it's not a bad idea for those of you that are a bit used to the Rastimes, would be Nupept. Nupept, it kind of falls in the same family. It's been known to be a hundred times, even some people say it's a thousand times more potent than Prastime. And it really does help with motivation levels. In the past, I was taking doses of like 10 milligrams three times a day, but I found it more helpful taking a dose of like 20 milligrams, sometimes 30 milligrams uh, for two servings a day. And then sometimes I'll take 10 milligrams in the evening if I absolutely need to, but it works in a very similar way in that it makes you alert. I found that with Nupep though, it's more short lasting versus Prastam or Anarastam you pretty much need to be taking it every single day and then after a couple of weeks it seems to be saturated in your system and starts working. With Nupept I've seen a lot of people respond to it very quickly and some people start to respond to it after a few days of use but either way I would recommend that if you do use Nupept more than once a day would probably work best. A dose of 10 milligrams uh, two times a day maybe three times a day if you're working very long hours that could be good and be mindful with Nupept different than the other rest times and that you actually will probably build a tolerance to Nupept fairly quickly. Like with the other rest times, I didn't seem to notice any sort of tolerance buildup, but with Nupep, I knew it was happening and I was making the mistake when I first started using Nupept of taking like 60 to 80 milligrams every single day. And then I took some time off of it and, and I noticed like my word recall was poor. I couldn't think as clearly and it did have kind of like those withdrawal symptoms with it. Like they weren't horrible, but they were noticeable. I, I still felt fine at work and everything, but I wanted to feel like 100% all the time. And, and if that's what you're looking for, then, then the way that I would recommend that you take something like Nupept would be six weeks on followed by two weeks off or the other protocol which could work for you is like five days on two days off and uh, two days off would be days when you're not putting in a lot of work. I would definitely put it before 
um, an important task, like you have an important meeting or you need to be in that flow state, that's where Nupept is really, really great. If you take it in the powder form, that's how I like it more so. I don't like it too much in the capsule. I would much prefer uh, getting some sort of scale, getting a little bit of the powder, placing it under my tongue, leaving it there, and it really does work great. And for better results with Nupept and the Ross Times too, uh, you would want to consume it with a choline source. My favorite form of choline being alpha GPC, which I've talked about in this video over here. Choline being a nutrient that's found in egg yolks, but it's not too commonly found in our diet. So it's great taking it in a supplemental form like CDP choline or choline by tartrate are also forms which are decent, but alpha GPC for sure is going to be my favorite. And I actually haven't cut down my intake of alpha GPC or choline. Like uh, very often on this channel, I've mentioned that the more rastams you take, the more choline you need to take as a result. Because if you take too many rastams without enough choline, you may experience like headaches or some negative side effects, or you just may not experience the rastams working altogether. But for me anyway, since I've stopped using oxy rastam and pram rastam, yet I've kept my alpha GPC intake the same. See, I'm using 150 milligrams of it three times a day and alpha gpc and the ras times and of course nupet this is going to be something which is so variable to each individual that it's really important that you try them for yourself especially with alpha gpc it's like you just don't know what the right dose is i've seen other individuals and like they really seem to need a lot of it in order for them to get the ras times or even nupep to start working and if nupep has not been working for you in the past then i would say be a little bit patient with it because you take it it's very subtle. And then like a week later, you think, wow, come to think about it, all my numbers look better. I'm working more hours. I'm more disciplined. I'm feeling better about myself. And that's kind of new pet for you. It's like you need to have some sort of objective measure to really gauge whether or not it's working. And if you're not in a sales job like myself, I realize it's not always that easy. So you want to ask your peers how your performance has been if you're into productivity like myself. And if you were to ask more about alternatives and which ones exist, it's going to depend on the racetam. Like when I look at anorastam specifically, anorastam is great for verbal fluency is good for anxiety, especially in social interactions, like not only going up and approaching people, but also feeling calm when you're in conversation. A great alternative to anorastam is actually lion's mane. Lion's mane makes you feel very calm. It makes you really intrigued about people to learn more about. I'm typically taking lion's mane three times a day. I've talked about it in depth um, in this video over here. It's pretty much been a game changer for me. So I like that as an alternative to anorastam. With respect to oxyrastam, that's where Nupep really comes into play. It feels very similar. With Pramorastam, unfortunately, I have yet to find any sort of alternative. I've tried so many nootropics, but for now, what I have found best is using Rhodiola rosea twice a day. So I'm using Rhodiola rosea once at 2 o'clock p.m. and then again at 6 o'clock p.m. I'm taking a dose of uh, 300 milligrams to 500 milligrams. And what I'm getting out of that is I feel a little bit more recharged. I find that it kind of feels like a nap. I call it a nap in a pill. You feel like mental clarity. And as a result, you're able to make better decisions and actually follow your schedule in a better fashion than you would without it. And if you're looking for an alternative to Prasatam, especially for somebody that used Prasatam in the past, I would ask you like, what did you really get most out of taking Prasatam? Um, did you get the improved memory? Because if it was the improved memory you'd be looking for, then I would use something like Bacopa. Bacopa being my favorite nootropic for memory specifically, short-term, long-term, being able to read material or for remembering things from way long ago and being able to associate one thing to the other. Bacopa is great, but if you use Prastam more so for energy levels, motivation, perhaps something like L-tyrosine may be good for you or L-dopa, which is popular. Some people like Bromantane. I personally didn't notice much from Bromantane, but that's the use of this channel is that we get to learn from each other. So there may be a Rasatam shortage but don't freak out we will get through this together and if you did get value from this video of course consider subscribing and if you're a returning viewer make sure to give this video a thumbs up and drop a comment and for those of you that want to chat with me one-on-one -on -one, you can do so over on patreon or send me a direct message on instagram and be sure to visit our discord server where we have a 24 7 chat room so we're able to answer time sensitive questions i thank you for your interest in nootropics and i look forward to seeing you all next time